All right, perfect. So we are recording. I will share my screen. All right, I think we're we're there. All right, does that, does that look good? Perfect. All right, excellent. Well, hello again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, my name is Christine Cherry. I am the Assistant Dean of Students. Paula, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Yep. And I am Paula Fitzpatrick. I'm the Director of the Center for Wellbeing, and we're delighted to join you today to talk about uh, making new social connections and building a support network on campus. Um, so when uh, Paul and I were kind of connecting and, and trying to figure out what we wanted to cover, because obviously when we're talking about student engagement and, and opportunities at WPI, um, there's a lot to talk about and we could probably go on for hours. Um, but we really uh, kind of wanted to focus uh, in our conversation on a couple of different um, things as we're hearing feedback from, from parents and from loved ones. Um, and number one is to kind of help provide a framework and understanding all of the resources that we have here at WPI to support um, our students' success. Um, realizing that, that we obviously know the resources, but as a, as a loved one and someone that we know our students turn to, um, you know, having, having our parents and guardians and loved ones feel informed about what the resources are certainly allows you to also be a great partner and collaborator in, in pointing students to us so that we can um, we can support them depending on what they're going through. We also want to provide some tools or insights on how to have challenging conversations with your students. They're navigating a new environment, um, even as, as parents and loved ones, you are potentially navigating a new environment. Um, and so, you know, how to how to kind of have and engage um, your, your students in those conversations. And then, of course, to answer any questions and provide perspective on how we can partner um, to best support your student in their growth and their development. So when we talk a little bit about student life on campus, obviously student activities is, is a portion of that and supporting life outside the classroom is, is such an important piece. Um, when we're talking about a holistic student experience, it's not only um, their experience inside the classroom, but also outside. And at WPI, we have over 240 clubs and organizations on campus. When I started here about 16 years ago, we had 135. So we've grown, which is great. Um, we also have a very active fraternity and sorority life out here on campus. About 33% of our students are affiliated. Um, I can't imagine WPI you know, without our, our Greek chapters. We've got a, a very in-depth community service program working with over 70 um, partner agencies. We offer leadership development programming, everything from a one-stop shop to a certificate series program to really support students in terms of where they're at, whether they're a um, general member looking to become a leader in an organization, um, you know, an existing student leader or someone who's looking to develop skills that will benefit them um, in life beyond WPI. We also offer late night programming. Um, so every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday night from about seven to 10, there's always a free program taking place on campus for our students. Uh, we offer weekend trips um, uh, at least once a weekend to a local place, I'd say within an hour um, outside Worcester. And that's incredibly important because as much as we have to do on campus, we want students to get used to, to being in their home away from home. And that includes Worcester. Um, there's a lot to do. It's a great um, college area. And so we want to highlight those opportunities for students as well. And then our office and student activities specifically also works with large campus programs. Maybe you joined us this past weekend for family weekend or maybe a couple weeks ago for new student orientation. Um, but you'll, you'll often see um, you know, student affairs and student activity staff around for those large campus programs. And I think when we Think about involvement. Every time when I talk with students and even when I talk with parents, um, there's a lot of importance for involvement. And this isn't new to our students. Many were involved um, in their high school experience, but research shows that students who are involved have more time management, uh, better time management skills. They feel a sense of connection to the institution. They have leadership and experience opportunities to speak about um, beyond their classroom experiences when they go for co-op internship or that first job interview, it really helps create networks outside of academics for students to meet others who have a shared passion, interest, hobby. Um, it gives chance of, uh, students an opportunity to explore. If I could tell you how many students I've met 
um, who are now ballroom dancers that never thought that they would be a ballroom dancer just because they walked by, you know, a ballroom dance practice. Um, that's, I think, one of the special things about WPI is you can you can explore new areas, but you can also hone in um, on those on those passion areas as well. And of course, we want our students to to have fun and and have some some relief to the stress that they feel um, with that with with their experiences inside and outside of academics. You know, as you're talking with your student about opportunities to get involved, we try to take a, a multi-layered approach to involvement at WPI. Uh, we just recently had our activities fairs where we had all of our clubs and organizations available to meet with students to share about, um, you know, how often they meet, what their club's about, um, answer any questions that folks might have and share how to get involved. But we also have my WPI, which is a great online resource tool that's just new this year. Um, it's replacing a, a previous platform that has a lot more functionality. And so it creates this one stop shop for students. They'll, they'll be able to see what events are taking place, to join clubs, get contact information, to find students who have a common or shared interest um, of, of their own. And so it really does um, enhance that student experience and build, um, provide an opportunity to build those connections, which is really important. Um, we really want to encourage students to try something new. I, I mentioned about the ballroom dance team, but you know we've got students who um, you know just fall upon different types of events and programs taking place on campus, and that's how they get involved or they stumble upon a friend who wants to take them to a club meeting. And we really encourage students to do that. It gives them an opportunity to meet new people. It gives them the opportunity to, to be exposed to a, a different type of event or program. Um, and it gives them the opportunity to make connections. The university calendar is another great tool. Um, that's our university-wide calendar. And I always say WPI is a great place to get a snapshot of, of the student experience. But the university calendar highlights all of those academic opportunities, the lectures, the workshops that aren't necessarily captured in my WPI. And so I really do encourage students to, to look at the university calendar. We actually are able to feed the student activities events into the university calendar. So that really is the most, I think, holistic or encompassing representation of the events and programs that are taking place on campus. We also have department opportunities. Um, you know, for, for students to come and connect with the student activities office staff, um, the student activities office and other campus departments do a ton of programming. I know Paula will talk about wellness days and all the things that, that her team offer. Um, so there really is a lot to choose from. Very often I hear from students, there's too much, I can't choose what to do. And so my approach is always to say, you know, it's, it's okay to, to take your time. And if you wanna be involved in one club, you know, this year and another club next year, that's totally okay. And a lot of students do take that approach um, to their involvement. And I think when I talk about involvement, I'm talking more about not just clubs and organizations. That those, that's not the only way to get involved at WPI. I think when you think about athletics, um, students who are you know, passionate about community service projects, um, mentoring, tutoring, all of those things are captured when we talk about involvement. It doesn't necessarily have to be a club. Uh, but but something that is connecting them to the institution or to the local community is incredibly important. So I talked a little bit about my WPI. This is a snapshot of, of what it actually looks like when students log in. So um, you'll see there's upcoming events, there's a landing page that really helps them curate an experience that, you, that is unique to themselves. If I was to scroll down on this page, you would also see like their particular involvements in their particular organizations. And I talked a little bit about late night programming, um, but really wanted to highlight, you know, this is just a small sampling of some of the programs that's taken place over this past year, whether that is the TRIPS program to, to kind of regional areas, um, but also the late night programming. We really try to come up with a diverse uh, set of programming um, to meet different students' interests and needs. Um, these are all incredibly popular um, programming options within the students. The same thing with our Tuesday night trivia program or the weekend movies that are shown on campus. Um, this, this really gives students an opportunity to get, get a taste of life on and, and off campus. 
And then how can your students find out what's happening on campus? How can you find out what's happening on campus? Um, social media, of course, we know um, students are using, we're all on it. Um, and so uh, the Student Activities Office um, has a very active following on Facebook, on Instagram, TikTok. Um, we encourage families and students to follow those channels. There's actually other campus channels that we would encourage people to follow as well. Um, to highlight those individual departments, whether that's athletics, our Office of Multicultural Inclusion, um, oh, I messed up their acronym, <laughs> our ODIME office, um, and, uh, you know, campus posters, bulletin boards, display screens, monthly events posters, all of those are available to, to, to students. I think one of the things that we try to do is ensure that um, you know, students are almost tripping over information on campus because not everybody looks at the same thing um, to find out what's happening on campus. So if you were just here for family weekend, you probably noticed the display screens um, around campus. It's a great resource for students if they're just waiting to get a coffee at Dunks. Um, SGA also sends weekly um, uh, digest emails to tell students what's happening this week on campus, and that's powered through my WPI. Um, and the office also does monthly events posters that are hanging across campus and in all the residence halls. And in those posters, we try to highlight at least one event that's taking place each day on campus. It would be a super long poster if we were to highlight all of the events and programs. And so we try to make sure um, that there is just at least a, a, a good descriptive of kind of what's taking place on campus that students can take advantage of. And then here is kind of an extension of some of those resources. So if you yourself would like to use um, my WPI, you can't lock in because th there probably aren't WPI credentials for you, but there is a public facing website that you can access when it comes to looking for clubs and organizations. And that includes the event, the event sections. Um, these are some of the social media um, handles that I alluded to. And we love to talk with students in person. I mean, email is great, but talking to students is, is so much better. And so if you have a student who has a question or is interested in seeing a, a particular type of event, we would really encourage them to come to the Student Activities Office. The staff is located on the third floor of the Rubin Campus Center. Um, this is the, the email that would head you know, directly to the, to the staff if they do prefer to, to reach out via email. Or if you have any questions, um, obviously, the advertisements that I spoke to on um, the digital displays are great resources for students in those um, calendars and weekly digests. I'll pass it over to Paula. All right, thank you. So I wanted to pick up talking about some of the resources to let everybody know what um, we can offer to students at the Center for Wellbeing. So the Center for Wellbeing is really meant to be a hub to help connect students to the wellness resources that we have available at WPI. As Christine mentioned, there's many different avenues of support uh, for students. And sometimes it can be overwhelming to figure out where to find the information that you need. So if your student is feeling like they're looking for something, but they're not even sure what the right questions are to ask, they can come to the welcome desk at the Center for uh, for Wellbeing and our peer wellbeing ambassadors are staffing our welcome desk from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, every day of the week. And they are there to help direct students to resources that they might need. So whether it is some programs that we might offer in the Center for Wellbeing, whether it's a student activities office, whether they might be better served going to academic advising or helping them connect with the tutors on campus. Our peer well-being ambassadors are really trained to provide that level of support for their fellow students. In the Center for Wellbeing, we're really taking a holistic approach to supporting students. So our goal is a public health model to help everyone flourish and thrive. Um, and we sort of are emphasizing four main pillars of well being health and vitality, meaning and purpose, relationships, and um, community, because uh, helping students make sure that they have um, some degree of balance in these different pillars of well being is what our um, office really uh, aspires to. So we can um, go to the next slide.
So a couple of uh, specific suggestions about how your students can engage with the Center for Wellbeing are first to participate in our wellness days. As Christine mentioned, uh, we have uh, four wellness days um, each academic year, one each term around midterm. And these wellness days are days when there is no classes, no assignment due dates, no sort of meetings. It's a day for the entire campus community to pause, to come together, and to engage in wellness activities. So the Center for Wellbeing helps to coordinate these uh, wellness days, uh, propping up some set of activities ourselves, and then working with the various campus partners who are also interested in supporting uh, well-being of students. So a wide variety thing of things from pickleball tournaments to um, sound bathing, yoga, meditation, sort of uh, dance fusion, um, pet therapy and uh, ice cream trucks. So kind of a, a wide range of, of things for people to engage in either um, active kinds of uh, rest or more passive rest uh, activities because we recognize that what is restful and restorative is very individual to, um, to each person. The other thing is we are Center for Wellbeing, which is located in the first floor of Daniels Hall, right between uh, Morgan's and Daniel, right next to the Morgan Dining Hall, is a, uh, a beautiful space for students to come in and to hang out. As you can see in the picture in the middle panel here, we have a lovely water wall, which is very soothing. Um, it is the whole space was really designed to be restorative and relaxing, a space for students to come and recharge. It has a very calm energy. So when students are feeling like they're managing quite a bit and um, many of our spaces on ca campus are very high energy spaces, this is kind of a lower tech space for uh, people to, to pause, to breathe and just uh, relax and hang out uh, with other people or to spend time by them by themselves. The Center for Wellbeing also offers a variety of different drop-in programs on uh, different days of the of the week. So we um, post on all of the the, the different outlets that Christine um, mentioned. Um, so it is um, easy for for students to engage with those uh, that information in whatever way um, suits their needs. Okay, go to the next slide. Um, other options for students for engaging in the Center for Wellbeing, uh, we do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations for wellness or academic coaching, and that is available through either our peer wellbeing ambassadors who are trained to be um, wellness and academic coaches or with our, um, our full-time staff. Um, we have a new online tool for students who might want to explore some online resources on their own, um, a balanced card sort. It is available through our website um, for students to identify what their own well-being priorities are. And uh, once they have identified those priorities, uh, there are some reflection questions for them to figure out how they're going to create a plan to incorporate those priorities in their life. And we really encourage students to schedule a consultation for some coaching or some accountability um, follow-ups to help support them in, uh, in those well-being efforts. One thing that we know from all of the, the research is that students can't really thrive academically if they're not taking care of themselves. And so making sure that your student is balan uh, balancing their taking care of themselves and their wellness priorities as a, as a vehicle for making sure that they can learn um, and, and really thrive academically, I think is a, um, a nice partnership for, for success. In addition to these consultations and drop-in options, we also offer uh, courses that students can take for wellness and PE credit. So for example, we offer a, a Koru mindfulness meditation class, which is an evidence-based program that was developed specifically for college students. We offer yoga. 
We um, have a new nutrition class that we're offering this year. And next um, term, we're going to be piloting a uh, sort of expressive arts, um, students going to the Worcester Art Museum and engaging in some uh, reflective activity through and healing through um, experiencing artwork. Um, so encourage your students to uh, explore what those wellness options are for wellness and PE credit. Um, and then we also some other offer a number of other programs that are available for registration. Project Connect is a great program, peer facilitated program for students to be able to expand their social network. So if you uh, have a have a, a student who maybe is a little bit introverted or needs a little bit of structure in order to um, to help facilitate their social connections, the Project Connect is a, is a great option. Um, and then we also have a radical health program, which is a four week peer facilitated program for students to gather as small groups, to learn some uh, ways to boost their resiliency and to connect with each other um, and to, to learn from their, from their peers. Go to the next slide. Um, and then finally, the space um, in the Center for Wellbeing is available for um, students, clubs, and organizations to uh, reserve. Uh, we also offer wellness sessions for um, groups that want to request a specific wellness session, or our programming rooms and our conference rooms are available for student uh, clubs to, to book. So um, finding space on campus sometimes can be, uh, can be a challenge. And so we have these uh, resources, which are also restorative um, soothing spaces for, for groups to gather in and connect with each other. And next slide. I think we'll kick back to you, Christine. Thanks, Paula. Um, I do want to share too. I know we just had someone post um, in the Q and A. If folks have questions or concerns as we're talking through this, please feel free to to enter something, and that'll help our our Q and A conversation um, later in the program. Um, so, in terms of what to do if your student feels stuck, and this might look very different for um, for each student. I think part of it is is reminding your student that, and I'm sure you know folks have done this, that they're not alone. Um, chances are, when I when I talk with students during orientation, one of my pieces of advice is, you know, you sit down, introduce yourself to the person sitting to your left and to your right. Um, sometimes that can be uncomfortable, um, but everyone is in the same boat, and I think sometimes people are are just afraid to either think that they're all alone or. Um, but the taking that first step can be scary, and it certainly can be, but encourage them to find comfort in the uncomfortable and remind themselves that they're not, they're not alone. And sometimes that small little action that they normally wouldn't do can have a huge impact um, in terms of the people that they're able to connect with um, and, and the things that maybe even they get involved in. I think another thing to do is to encourage your student to explore their community. College is an incredibly transformational time. It's a chance for them to be engaged with folks that are from different countries, have different lived experiences, um, have different ideologies. And so really ex exploring their community, really encouraging them to, to meet the students on their floor if they live on campus, to connect with students in those groups um, for project work and, and get to know them both personally and um, and obviously professionally or within kind of their, their project scope, identify opportunities for hobby alignment. I think one of the really interesting and great things about WPI is where students are able to intersect their, their academic passion with their personal passion um, or their hobby. Like when we have students using, you know, biomedical skills to, to help people, you know, dance. Like there, there's just, there's so many ways that people's passions and academics can come together and really helping identify opportunities for that hobby alignment is really important both inside the classroom and outside the classroom i used to joke that we have a club for everyone and i still think that we do um, but it doesn't surprise me that every year we've got students who are who are just really passionate about a particular area and want to start a new organization and i think that tells a lot about our community um, in, in terms of feeling that, that, that they have a place here and then that's and that's incredibly important we want to encourage that folks reach out for assistance if your student maybe didn't get to an activities fair 
or is just now starting to like open up to the idea of getting involved in something, they don't have to wait until next year to do that. They don't even have to wait until the beginning of B term or C term to do that. Students ebb and flow in terms of different involvement and opportunities throughout the academic year. It's never too late. Um, reaching out to clubs and organizations is, is easy in terms of finding the information from my WPI. If that doesn't feel right to a student, we want them to connect with staff in the student activities office who can help make that connection, whether that's to the club's faculty or staff advisor or to the direct student leadership or engage in the student in terms of saying, yeah, what are you, what are you really excited about? What are you passionate about? And then let the staff help them um, find areas where those hobbies might align with, with some of the clubs and organizations that we have on campus. We also want students to share how they feel and advocate for what they need. Um, this is incredibly important, not only for us to know what students are feeling and what they need, um, but also to begin those skills of self-advocacy, which are just so important as they make this transition um, into, into adulthood. And so in encouraging them to come and talk to someone um, or if um, you know they come up with a problem and inherently like they, they wanna ask for your opinion and for your feedback, you know, don't be afraid to ask them like what steps they've taken to try to figure this out. And then hopefully maybe point them in the direction of some resources, which is another reason why we wanted to have this conversation with everyone. Um, it, it's really important that they're able to advocate and begin to identify um, what they need and how they feel about a particular experience or challenge that they're starting um, to find themselves in, in, in college. And eventually they, they will be challenged. If they haven't yet, they will find that there's a challenge waiting for them in the future. Um, we want them to try new things, encourage them to go to something new, even if it seems really out there, um, and, and share their ideas. So many of our student programs and ideas on campus are, are fueled from students themselves with all of these clubs and organizations. They're the ones that are, that are powering this programming. And our student activities works to support that um, and helps augment that. But we, we love hearing from students because we want them to be a part of the planning process. We want them to be a part of the solution. And so that's just incredibly important. So please encourage them to share their ideas um, with, with both their peers and the faculty and staff that are on campus. And then, you know, considerations and conversations. Um, we are approaching break, which is scary to say, because I feel like we just had orientation, um, but students might be coming home for that term break, or they, they may be coming home during the winter break. And inherently, you know, they've started to build autonomy. They've started to, to build their own habits, which may align with their experience back at home um, with their loved ones, or it might be a little bit different. And so talking about that is really important. Communicating, um, you know, with your student about what to expect um, or what your expectations are and, and learn about how they've evolved their, their routine once now that they've been in college for, for a couple of weeks, if they're a first year student, if they're a second, third, uh, you know, a, a fourth year student, um, you know, maybe those conversations have already been had, but always important to, to, to connect with your student in those, in those areas. Having a communication contract with your student, I find this, this pops up more, I think, with first year students or, or second year students in terms of what is good communication with your loved ones at home look like? Um, and what is, you know, realistic and what is something that everybody can, can agree to? So, I think what I have found a lot of times, even in my own experience, you know, having consistent contact with loved ones at the very beginning is totally natural because you want to have that connection in that sense to, to home. And you want your loved ones to know that you're okay and that you're still feeling that connection. As students become more comfortable in their college experience, they might be so involved on campus that they forget to call every day the way that they had those, those first couple of weeks which I, I can imagine as a parent is, is challenging. I remember my parents, even in my own experience, like, are you, are, are you okay? Like you haven't called us. And I'm like, I'm just too busy, um, which you know, is, is, is okay. So having that, that communication contract with your students is really important. Um, encouraging students to get involved, um, you know, encouraging them to, to lean into those uncomfortable moments um, to, to try something new is really, really important and supporting the student in finding their own avenues for, for connection. Um, 
you know, I always say for every question they ask, ask one in for a return. Um, students are pretty trained when they come to meet with me and they're like, oh, you know, what should I do about this? And I'm going to say, well, what do you think you should do about that? Um, and then, you know, we engage in, in a good dialogue. By the time they get in senior year, they come in and they say, okay, what should I do? This is what I think I should do. Now, what do you think? And so, um, you know, practicing that can, can be really beneficial just in, in their own um, development and, and self-advocacy. Um, remind them that they're not alone. Um, like I said before, we really want them to know that there are other people having probably the same questions or the same concerns. And so um, there's a way to find community in that. And then connect with faculty during office hours. We, we really like drill this in, especially during orientation. You know, having a good connection with faculty is incredibly important, not just when there's a question about a homework problem or if they're having an issue, but faculty can be a great resource for, for networking, for reference letters, for just engaging in, in conversation. And so um, engaging faculty and staff outside of the classroom um, is really beneficial in, in, in so many different ways. I'm gonna pass it back over to Paula. So one thing I think that concerns parents quite quite a bit is uh, understanding this um, dividing line between what is sort of the, the normal discomfort that is part of the developmental process of growing up and um, when things are um, becoming perhaps of more concern and um, some additional support is, is needed. And I just want to name some of the differences between the kinds of services that the Center for Wellbeing is able to offer um, versus our Student Development and Counseling Center, um, because I think it's it's important to um, to help you all uh, as you're directing your students to um, to the support services. So the Center for Wellbeing really focuses on holistic well-being, as I mentioned. We are interested in population level interventions, taking a public health approach, offering proactive and preventive strategies for all students to boost their well being. So, we're providing evidence based health and well being promotion programs. Our goal is to engage with every student at WPI uh, because we all need to uh, focus and be concerned about our well-being. We all have um, skills that we can increase in ways that we can, can boost our, our well-being so we're thriving and flourishing. Um, we are well-being promotion educators. We are not therapists in the Center for Well-Being, so we're not going to be offering therapeutic interventions. And we offer programs for employees as well as for students with the recognition that the entire, entire campus community um, supports this whole holistic well-being initiative. And we all need to be well in order to show up as our, our best selves in the, in the classroom or in our offices. The Student Development and Counseling Center, in contrast, focuses primarily on mental health support. Um, most of their uh, emphasis uh, is on individual interventions, most often through short-term therapy that is targeted to an area of concern. They offer both individual as group and group therapy, and all of the counselors in the SDCC are licensed therapists. So if your student really has a, uh, a concern that rises to a clinical need, then you would um, really, the SDCC is the appropriate place. If you have a student who is struggling with time management or they're struggling with um, not really not feeling confident about how to connect with a, uh, a faculty member or how to ask their questions during class, maybe not sure how to build a plan where they can fit their wellness in. Those are all great things for um, for for people to come to the to the center for well-being. And as a parent, if you're concerned and you're not really sure what to do, you can reach out to the center for well-being. You can reach out to the student development and counseling center, or you're welcome to submit a care report. And we have um, that resources available on the the WPI website. Also wanted to pick up on some of the um, the themes that 
uh, Christine was was mentioning and having conversations with your with your student, it's really important to practice empathy over problem solving. So being able to listen uh, to what your what your student is is saying and not jump to try to fix the problem um, is super, super important. So when we're practicing empathy, empathy, we're asking questions to really understand how they're viewing the world. Uh, we're asking questions to understand um, what their feelings are. And there is such great value in articulating what your feelings are because that awareness is often very important. And sometimes when you when you name it, it can um, change your experience of the, the feelings that you're expressing. Uh, when we're practicing empathetic listening, we're um, conveying these messages that we appreciate these um, students as human beings. So certainly they're here for their academic experience, but we don't want to only constantly be asking them about how their classes are going and what kind of grades they're getting or you know, what sort of plans they have for applying for internships, right? Because that overemphasizes the academics and can give um, students the impression that their needs as, as human beings come second. Um, so, you know, really engaging with them and underscoring that you understand that being a human being is is messy and it's complicated and there's ups and downs and all of that is is welcome. And and not forgetting to communicate your understanding, um, to let them know if they're having a, a challenging situation. Uh, yes, that sounds very, very difficult, and um, you know, it's these are these are hard problems, and um, it can be very stressful being a college student, and just helping to normalize that um, experience. Um, and as Christine said allow them to come up with the solutions to their to their problem because if you sit with them and listen which is really difficult um i'm a a, a mom of uh, three grown daughters who have all graduated from from college and now a grandmother to two uh to two granddaughters and it's really hard not to want to fix their problems we have life experience we have perspective and um, we love these 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 students, and we don't want them to struggle and to to suffer. And yet, we also know that part of that struggle is 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 necessary for learning and and growth. And so, as a um, as their support system, the best thing that you can do is to provide that empathy, provide that understanding, guide them to solve problems themselves. And reach if you know the your student cannot reach out and ad advocate for themselves, then to um, reach out to us to help connect them with the the support that they need. Um, and again, I I guess I sort of mentioned this already, but underscore that prioritizing well being is really important. So taking care of yourself is not something that happens only during breaks or only during the summer. Uh, well-being is practiced through daily habits. We all need rest and recovery every day. Um, so taking time to, to eat and to sleep and to connect with friends and family is all really important. It's a huge challenge to avoid over scheduling as well as under scheduling, right? So there is a delicate balance because uh, Christine was talking about all of these different opportunities and ways that we encourage students to be involved, and that is really good for their well-being. If they're doing too many things, then that is going to perhaps increase their stress. If they're doing nothing and they're not leaving their room and getting out and interacting with folks, that is also a, a concern. So finding that balance, and that's going to be different for everybody about you know how energized they feel by spending time with other people versus how much time they they need um, you know to to be by themselves. But making sure that there is that degree of engagement is is super important, and setting realistic expectations. Um, hard classes might not be ones that you always get an A in, and that's okay. 
Um, you know, we have many students who graduate and go on and do amazing things, and they did not get straight A's. Uh, and the class that you might get a B in or a C in, might you might learn so much, um, and that's going to really become important for you down the down the line. So, um, encouraging some some realistic expectations and kindness that. If, you know, if you're trying your best, then um, maybe that's good enough. So um, Paul and I put together um, like six top ways to get involved at WPA. Um, number one, go to student organization meetings, try something new. No one will be surprised to hear me say that after our time together. Um, join an intramural sport. Oh, I got too excited. Um, go to campus events, get involved, use our wellness resources on campus and say yes to new opportunities. Like there, there is so much to choose from at WPI. Um, we know that it, it's not inexpensive, uh, you know, to, 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 to engage in a college experience. And so, um, you know, take every resource and take every opportunity um, that you can within those realistic expectations that Paula was talking about um, and, and just say yes, just try something new. Um, and so if there's any way that we can support students in, in getting to that yes and, and you know, succeeding on um, using these tools, we are happy to do so. Um, and so I guess at this point, we can um, head into um, questions and answers. Um, and Paula, there was a question that was added to the chat about um, taking part in Wellness Day activities. Sometimes it can be seen, I think, maybe overwhelming if there's large crowds. So, Maybe we could break the question up and talk a little bit about how to navigate wellness days. Um, and then we can talk maybe a little bit about therapy dogs too. Yeah, so um, the there are a wide variety of different uh, offerings on, on wellness days and we do encourage students to uh, check out the schedule ahead of time. Um, we create like a little passport for students so that they can sort of have a um, tangible something in their hands to, to see what the, what the activities are that they want to prioritize visiting. We also have the entire schedule is published on our uh, website and is also in my um, WPI for students to, um, to find. So it can be helpful to identify maybe two or three activities that are um, attractive um, to, to you as an individual. And if somebody is really struggling knowing what to do on the wellness days, they are welcome to come and engage with our peer well-being ambassadors and they can answer some questions for them about like, oh, I don't really know what sound bathing is. Like, is that something that might be for me or how you know what is the best time to 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 go to the the dog therapy um and they can help um them develop a plan to negotiate the 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 wellness days we also have some uh wellness at home kits so for folks who um might be off campus or really um you know not sure that how to engage there's some things that are offered through um webinars and then other suggestions um and that we put in these wellness at, at home kits. Um, we, as I said, we do have a variety of options, some that are kind of more um, passive, sort of uh, peaceful, calm, um, quiet activities and others that are a little bit more high energy to kind of help folks uh, wherever they, they might be. Um, the pet therapy is definitely super, super um, popular and um, does draw a, uh, a, a big crowd. And, um, you know, we, we do our best to um, offer it for in, in a number of, of hours so that uh, we can try to, um, to, to manage the crowds. Um, but appreciate the suggestion about maybe thinking about bringing them into the Center for Wellbeing on a, on a more regular uh, basis so that they, um, students might be able to um, kind of pop in rather than sort of flocking to them on wellness days. I know there are other student clubs and organizations, and Christine can speak to this, um, that are regularly bringing um, sort of dogs and cats and sometimes goats and other, other animals to campus. 
Yeah, so we, we do have a policy on campus and, and, and therapy animals is actually really popular on our campus. It's, it's not just um, tied to wellness days. I find that many groups are looking to bring therapy animals on campus around midterms and around finals when students really need that, that therapeutic moment with you know a four-legged friend. Um, we've had miniature horses on campus. We've had um, therapy animals. And so it, it is not just a, a once in a while. I would say it happens at least once or twice a term um, that we're working with local agencies to bring animals on campus. It's very, very popular. So when the students have the interest, we, we support them in, um, in doing that. And they're probably with my WPI might be a way to tag um, to find those things readily so that they would come up in their personal feed. Maybe I need a, a therapy animal tag for events. Maybe we should just, I'm going to write yes. that down. <laughs> it's a great idea. Are there any other questions that folks have or anything that you'd like us to, to talk about either further based off of what we shared today or something related to WPI, we can do our best to answer. I know one other thing that was kind of mentioned in the, the question that was uh, posted before was about um, uh, the student being super, super hardworking and um, having trouble disengaging and taking a break or feeling like, oh my gosh, if I stop, it's going to, uh, you know, I just need to continue until everything is done. And for project-based learning, things are almost never done, right? Because <laughs> there's always kind of like a next step and there's a next piece of a, of a project. So, um, you know, helping your students to, to recognize that taking a break is actually very helpful for them cognitively as well as emotionally and physically um, because our brains are not designed to work 24 seven. You know, you can have maybe four or five hours of sustained, deep, concentrated work, and then you're going to hit a wall and you're not going to be very effective. And sometimes taking a break, going to dinner with your friends, walking across campus, getting some fresh air is going to like um, give your, uh, your mind some space to, that the solutions to the problems that they've been struggling with all, all of a sudden become clear. And so I think there's this counterintuitive um, tendency to think, oh, if I stop and rest, then that's going to put me behind academically. But actually, all of the research shows that people are more effective and efficient when they work and rest and work and rest. So just continuing to um, reinforce that with your with your own student, I think is is super, super helpful. I would absolutely agree. I am not seeing anything else pop up. So I, I think we can close out a little early. Um, I, I'll try to put uh, Paula and I's uh, information back up on the screen. Um, so if folks have any questions or concerns, you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, but with that, just want to thank everybody for their time. Um, we really appreciate um, you engaging with us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, to reach out. And actually, I do see one question that just came in. Um, I see a lot of students at the dining hall sitting alone with their cell phones. Um, has there ever been tried to have tables identified for social chatting. So um, I think this is a really great question. We actually did try this a little bit um, following COVID because we were trying to like, we realized the students were looking for those opportunities to engage with one another, but maybe not have felt comfortable to just sit down. And so we did have these like um, tables with signs that say, I want to chat about, you know, live action role play, or I want to sit down and chat about, you know, sustainability. Um, we didn't find those to be that the students didn't take advantage of them um, all that often. One thing that I'm really excited about for my WPI 
is students actually have the ability to put tags of interest on their own profile, and they are able to sort and to find other students who have a similar interest. Um, it might feel a little less intimidating reaching out to someone behind a screen, um, but that's also why we also encourage students to you know, go to a club meeting to introduce themselves to someone that they're sitting next to in class. You know, I think sometimes we rely on technology a little too much to make connections. And so those, those opportunities for, for intersection and meeting in person is super important. Um, if you find that, um, you know, your student isn't able to find connections with people based off of their interests, please reach out. Happy to, to, to try to make as many connections as possible. I think when we're living in a digital age, um, I inherently are noticing that people are just on their cell phones um, a little bit more. Um, and some of my own research has been in social media, so it's very fascinating to me. But um, yes, absolutely, we do notice that. Um, we would love to engage. Um, that might be another program, how to step away from our phones. Um, but I think engaging in, in students and how to, to kind of take a look up and connect with people in person is incredibly, incredibly important. So I, I appreciate you bringing up that that comment. Yeah, and I would just add to, to everything that Christine said that this is where I think hobbies can be really helpful and really powerful vehicles for making connection because sometimes it's it's hard to go up to a person that you don't know and just strike up a, a random conversation or sit down next to somebody that you don't know in the in the dining hall. But if you're standing shoulder to shoulder with somebody working on a hobby together and then you both have that shared interest, it's a way to sort of spark conversations and internet interactions. And that can be a really powerful way for, um, you know, for, for connections and relationships to grow. And, you know, you know, the maker space that we have on campus has so many different opportunities for students to engage in hobbies and, and activities and making things and building things, which our students are just amazing at in so many different ways that that is uh, is, is really helpful um, to a way to, to promote those connections, too. And, and also, if, if students find that how to start that connection is, is challenging. We offered a life skills kind of programming series. And one of those programs is the art of small talk. So we even, you know, I, there's opportunities for students to even learn some of those skills. Like how do you, how do you strike up that conversation um, both professionally and, and personally. Um, so there are a ton of resources out to support students in that manner. And our project connect program as well, sort of, is a, a little practice ground for starting up conversations and engaging in, in conversations um, because it really uh, focuses on getting together with people and, and chatting and helps to, to build those skills um, in a supportive environment. Well, I hope that was helpful. I um, want to thank everyone again, Paula. Thank you. Always a pleasure to, to get to work with you. Um, but if anyone has any questions or concerns, please feel free to, to reach out. We are happy to, to do so and hope that your, your students are doing well and enjoying their time at WPI. Uh, hope you have a great day and we'll see you around campus maybe. Bye. Bye-bye.